Question 4A, Part 1. Explain why transition elements have variable oxidation states. So the answer in the mark scheme is uh, the 3D and 4S subshell. They are similar in energy or their energy level uh, are very close. Okay, so um, I use the iron uh, as an example. So because iron is a transition element uh, and it can form multiple uh, oxidation states. So first, um, when the iron um, uh, ionized, so it will release the 4s electron first. So the 4s2 means the two electrons in this subshell, this orbital, uh, will release first and form the this uh, iron 2. So because the 4s and 3d, their energy level is very close. So therefore, it's easier for this iron 2 now to release another electrons from the d uh, orbitals. So means uh, from this iron 2, it can further ionize and form <coughs> the uh, this iron 3. Release one electron, then it will form the iron 3. So it just because of the 3D and the 4S subshell, they are quite close, means uh, after the electrons uh, in the 4S uh, subshell released, then it's uh, continued by the 3D and it's easier to happen because their energy level is uh, quite close. That, that, that's the meaning. Part 2. Sketch the shape of the 3D Z square. Uh, so when it's a Z square, so you need to draw the two loops along the uh, Z axis and make sure you draw another donut ring uh, in, in the middle. Uh, so this is how the D Z square, the 3D Z square looks like. Okay, part B. A sample of um, this uh, hexa aqua copper two ion uh, reacted separately with the excess of uh, solutions uh, A and the excess of solution B. And uh, for the uh, this uh, complex ion with the solution A is formed precipitate, and uh, the same complex ion with solution B. Uh, it's just a ligand substitution. So now, suggest a possible identity for the solution A and B and give the uh, relevant, relevant observations and the formula of the copper containing products. Okay, this one is quite uh, easy. Uh, so first, when the copper solution or this uh, hexa aqua copper uh, complex ion is from precipitate, so we know that uh, it must react with sodium hydroxide. Why? Because it will form copper hydroxide. Uh, so the equation is this one. Um, the copper uh, hexa aqua copper two ion will react with this uh, hydroxide to form this. The copper now with two hydroxide and four H two O. Okay, so this is the pure blue precipitate that's formed. Uh, so uh, then you put this uh, solid uh, in this part, the formula of copper containing products. So is this one. Right? This is a pure blue precipitate. And after that, uh, <clears throat> again, for the solution B, it's just a ligand substitution. Um, for the this hexa aqua copper 2 ion, uh, we can use... Uh, uh, at least two solutions uh, that uh, will react with the complex ion. Uh, in your syllabus, the most common solution is the ammonia and the uh, uh, HCl or the correct solution. So if we use ammonia solution with the this uh, hexa aqua copper 2 ion, so the equation is this one, uh, for most of this uh, ammonia will react with uh, this uh, hexa aqua copper 2 and uh, it will form this uh, new complex ion. So this complex ion is has uh, four ammonia ligand and two H2O ligands in there. 
So this is the most uh, stable form of the complex form when there is uh, ammonia solutions uh, which react with this hexa aqua uh, copper 2 ion. Okay, so this is the one that formed the deep blue or dark blue solution. So what you need to put is just uh, observation is a deep blue solution and you just put this species. The copper with this uh, uh, 4 ammonia and 2 H2O ligand. If let's say you want to put the uh, HCl solution with the uh, this uh, copper, this hexa aqua copper 2 solution, so this is the equation, uh, 4 chloride uh, will substitute all the H2O ligand inside the, this uh, complex ion to form a new complex ion. So uh, it's uh, uh, 4 uh, chloride inside there. Uh, so it's the uh, tetrachloro copper uh, or copric uh, 2 ion. So and of course uh, with a 6 H2O. Uh, so this is the one that formed the yellow solution. So uh, if you put uh, this uh, HCl solution, then the observation is yellow solution form, and this is a complex ion. So it's uh, okay. So now next part. Um, part C, a solution containing the uh, this uh, diamine uh, silver uh, uh, silver ion. Uh, so are colors. So this uh, complex ion uh, is uh, soluble in water and is colorless. Uh, explain why this complex is colorless. Uh, it's quite uh, uh, straightforward. Uh, first, if you want to know, uh, you can uh, use the uh, electron configuration for the this uh, silver. Uh, so it's a krypton 4D10 5S1 or 5S1 4D10. Um, so we know that uh, silver uh, normally it will form uh, uh, silver positive means uh, it will release one electrons and these electrons must from the 5s so the 5s electrons now remove and for the silver ion right so it has krypton for uh, krypton 4d10 so when it's 4d10 means we know that all the d orbitals they are fully filled if let's say there is a DD splitting, uh, it's formed two set of D orbitals. Even there is a, a the light pass through the solution, uh, there is no DD transition. Means the electrons from the lower D orbitals cannot really excite to the higher uh, energy D orbital. So we say that no DD transition because no DD transition, no absorption of light. Therefore, is of course colorless, right? Uh, that's the reason. Uh, so this is the answer, right? So is the orbital is fully filled, as I told you. Okay. Therefore, no DD transition. Okay. D. Two bidentate ligands are shown in uh, Figure four point two. Um, so we have this EN and DPYS. Um, explain what it means by bidentate ligand. So it's very easy. Uh, when it's a, a bidentate ligand, means it must have two donor atoms. And the two donor atoms must have a lone pair uh, with it. So EN it has one, two lone pair. Right? The lone pair is on nitrogen. And the DPYS also, the nitrogen it has one and two lone pair. So this is the bidentate ligand means okay, species with two lone pairs of electron that form dative bonds with the central metal ion. Okay, part E. So we have this uh, ruthenium, uh, the Io3 positive uh, ions, and it's from octahedral complex, which is this one. Uh, so it has two bidentate ligand and one mono uh, two monodentate ligand. Uh, so means uh, these uh, complex ions uh, it will form uh, cis trans and opticals together. Um, now the, this complex shows the same kind of serum isomerism uh, as the, this uh, ruthenium with four ammonia and two chloride. Uh, but for this one because uh, they are all monodentate ligand. 
uh, it just can form the cis-trans isomerisms only. Okay, part one, complete the three-dimensional diagram. So means you have to draw something like that, the wedge line and dotted line. Uh, in figure uh, 4.3 to show the three different stereoisomers okay, of this uh, complex ion. Okay, again, with this uh, two bidentate ligand and two monodentate ligand. Uh, it's better for you to draw the uh, cis isomer uh, and uh, it's a mirror image. So uh, imagine that it's a mirror in between these uh, two isomers. Uh, so you need to draw the cis isomer means the chlorine, right, or the or the chloride uh, at the same site, and you just draw the two bidentic ligand. Uh, in this question, you can use uh, this one to represent the bidentic ligand. Okay, the two end with a bridge here, right? The uh, okay, so um, you just draw the two bidentic ligand here, right? So. After you draw this uh, cis isomer, then you need to draw the mirror image. So make sure uh, the if the these two uh, chlorine on left, then these two must be on right hand side. So it must be like a mirror image. If this one is on uh, top left, then this one must be top right. Okay, this one if it's be uh, is uh, uh, lower uh, left, this is must be lower right. Okay, so. Then these two, they are the mirror images, which they are not super impossible. So they are optical isomer. Then you need to draw the uh, another one, the trans isomer, which the chlorine they are at different side, right? Uh, so this is a trans isomer that you need to draw. Um, part three: state the different type of stereoisomerism shown by uh, this. Uh, this uh, complex ion, okay, uh, I told you just now, uh, it will form optical, the first two here, optical isomerism, and uh, between these, uh, the isomer one, three, or two, three, uh, they are cis trans, right? So it has two types of stereoisomerism. Um, <clears throat> deduce which stereoisomers in the E1 here, these three, uh, which one is has the, uh, is, uh, is non polar non-polar. Non-polar means uh, the dipole cancer. Uh, normally we will choose the, the, the trans isomer. Why? Because trans isomer, uh, for example, the chlorine, they are opposite side, they will uh, cancel the dipoles. And let's say here also there is dipole, it will cancel out. Right? So therefore it has no net dipole for this uh, trans isomer. Okay, that's why uh, we always, uh, we normally use the uh, trans isomer uh, for this uh, the, this answer, okay? Because dipole cancel. Okay, that's all. Thank you.